Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2019 here in Budapest, Hungary, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Mario Manovic, who is the director of the Radio Communication Bureau for the International Telecommunication Union, and we're very pleased to have him in the studio. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Now, uh, Mr. Manovic, perhaps we could talk a little bit about the theme of this event is innovating together, connectivity that matters. From where you sit, what makes connectivity meaningful? Well, connectivity has become as important as any basic service, like electricity or water. Uh, and broadband connectivity in particular uh, is driving all the sustainable development goals. So it is key in our societies for, for the future development of them. Uh, it has improved education by bringing digital content and e-education. It has improved health uh, by telemedicine and by bringing more information to people. It has improved the financial, uh, let's say, uh, aspects of our society with the e-banking and other services. So it has the potential to drive all the sectors of the economy and, uh, and then promote uh, development. Uh, from the social perspective, it has also changed the way in which people communicate and interact. So obviously it has become uh, a need uh, for all of us, both personally and professionally. Now, uh, the Radio Communication Bureau is uh, um, obviously uh, been uh, focusing very much on uh, technology for many, many years now. Uh, which innovative technologies, policies or approaches do you think nowadays have the greatest power to transform lives everywhere? Well, I think this transformation will be produced by a mix of technologies. It's not only one that will drive it, but obviously we are all talking about 5G or IMT 2020. This, of course, will be one of the key ones. Uh, they, they have the power of uh, increasing the, the way in which uh, we communicate today in, uh, in speed and capacity and, uh, and uh, possibilities to reach everywhere, uh, everybody uh, at incredible, incredible speeds. Uh, but also it has the, the power of uh, communicating objects between themselves and creating their opportunities for the industry. Uh, also, this low latency and high reliability applications that will uh, allow us to have uh, self-driving cars and uh, carry out uh, surgical operations at a distance. So obviously this is one of the key uh, technologies that will bring the change. But also there are others like uh, HAPS, the high altitude platforms that will enable uh, to connect uh, rural areas and uh, low populated areas by bringing uh, connectivity to them uh, and uh, having the backhauling of these areas. Also these new networks of uh, non-geostationary satellites that will bring uh, more capacity and reduce price uh, to broadband connectivity via satellite reaching all places of the world. So all these technologies will be playing together in order to bring this change. Coming back to 5G, I wondered whether you could possibly bring us up to speed a little bit on this in terms of the fact that there's been obviously uh, some concern uh, around the globe about uh, the proliferation of the antenna, uh, its health effects. Perhaps you could uh, elucidate uh, on us on the actual position for that. Sure. Well, as you know, uh, when we are using mobile uh, communications, we are exposed to a radiation regardless of the technology. This is not new for 5G. This was also true with the previous technologies for G, 3G, 2G, uh, because this is, why, this is how we transmit these signals through uh, radio spectrum. Um, obviously, there are levels uh, of uh, radiation that are safe uh, for the human body, for the human being, and those are the ones that are recommended for all countries to utilize. So there is a bit of misperception sometimes when people think, I want to be as far as possible from an antenna. But what they don't realize is that it's their phone that is emitting and receiving signals. And the further you are from an antenna, the more power the phone uses in order to reach the signal. So you are receiving more radiation, in fact, from your terminal. Maybe not from the antenna, but from the terminal. So we, if we respect the levels uh, that are, uh, let's say, studied by the international organizations, uh, the, like the World Health Organization and the ITU guidelines on that, uh, there is no proof or no evidence of any 
harm to the, to the human health. For 5G, this has become an issue because when we go to uh, high frequencies, what we call the millimeter bands, uh, for this heavy, let's say, uh, data exchange in urban areas, then the antennas have to be closer to each other. But those are very low power antennas that will be installed, so uh, less and less exposure to the human being. So as long as the, mem the um, uh, administrations, the, the countries, enforce this respect of the power levels, uh, we are sure that there are many other activities that the human beings carry out that are much, far more risky than using the phone. And how important is collaboration between industry players, uh, sectors and nations in, in achieving uh, digital transformation? Well, uh, collaboration has become more important than ever. Uh, as we are saying, uh, in the future, every object that can be connected will be connected to the network. So we will have a, an ecosystem that will be uh, all connected and talking to each other, be it human beings or objects or machines. So uh, obviously this opens the door for the industry and for all these verticals of the industry that can benefit from that. So there is uh, a room for collaboration among all of them. And obviously the government, and most in particular the Ministry of ICTs, has to collaborate with all of them in order to make sure that all the efforts are conducive to what we want in our society, in economic development. And I see you've got a major conference coming up uh, in uh, Sharm el-Sheikh, I understand, in, uh, in uh, October and November this year. Absolutely. We have the World Radio Communication Conference 2019, which uh, modifies the treaty uh, that binds all member states around uh, what we call the radio regulations, which is the international regulatory framework for the use of frequency bands and uh, satellite orbits. And one of the topics that we are going to study there is additional frequency bands for IMT 2020, which is the official name of the ITU standard for 5G. We're here at ITU Telecom World 2019. It's an important also event in, in uh, ITU's calendar. What's the, the role of events such as this for you, do you think, uh, uh, on, a, on a global sphere? And what are the highlights of ITU's participation in the event? Well, I think this is an excellent platform for the industry or and the, all the sector, in fact, to come together and discuss. Uh, not only the operators and the manufacturers, but also the service providers, the government, the regulators, and they exchange views and uh, create uh, partnerships and synergies in order to make uh, all the, what we discussed before happen. So uh, this is uh, very conducive in that regard. Uh, we, as the radio communication sector, we have contributed with several uh, sessions on spectrum-related issues. We started with uh, uh, new radio technologies, so it's exactly what you mentioned uh, before. What are the new technologies that we can see in the future that will help uh, connect people and things? Then we had two sessions on 5G, uh, one ministerial roundtable, and uh, another one on the state of play uh, of 5G, and then the fourth one uh, about regulatory challenges for uh, 5G and uh, what is uh, the that we can expect from WRC19, the World Radio Conference that we just discussed. So I would say that uh, everybody is contributing with the key topics uh, that are uh, now discussed at the level of the sector. And I would say that it's a unique opportunity for participants to get involved and to get acquainted with all these changes and all these, let's say, trends for the future. And finally, have you got a message for participants here in, in Budapest and, and also our, our wider audience watching and listening to this? Well, I would say that if, the, if you are here in Budapest, then you should uh, take advantage of this event to see the new technologies, what is coming, what is being exper experimented even that will come in the future. Uh, discuss with your peers, discuss with uh, potential partners and uh, prepare yourself for WRC19. It's going to be a tough conference, but very important one for the future. Wonderful. Well, Mario Manovic, thank you very much for joining us in the studio, and we will look forward to catching up with you again uh, at WRC19. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.